Hello, my name is Andy and I'm the village idiot and I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. Welcome to the very last parish in the city of Wakefield. And in some ways I've saved the best while last. I've definitely saved the biggest while last in terms of population. 20,000 people live here and behind me is a railway station. And historically, the railway station and the railways in general were very important to this town. Welcome to the town and civil parish of Normanton. Normanton is a town and civil parish in the city of Wakefield and the 30th and final one in the series. It lies to the northeast of Wakefield and to the southwest of Castleford and at the time of the 2011 census the population of the civil parish was 20,872. The Normanton ward of Wakefield City Council is slightly smaller having only a population of 16,220. Normanton was originally surrounded by a moat and in Norman times was the site of an enclosed settlement chosen for its strategic viewpoints across the surrounding area. It became known as Norman Tune or Norman Tun. The Doomsday Book records the settlement as Norman Tune. At the time the Doomsday Book was compiled in 1086, the colonisation of Yorkshire by the Normans was well underway. Archaeological evidence at today's Normanton points to Hoare Hill, known these days as Howe Hill, an eminence that was probably a defensive strategic mound once reinforced by a wooden palisade. The evidence of a Norman Mott and Bailey fortification at the town and the name is likely evidence that Normanton's name derived from the substantial Anglo-Norman presence in the area. Although the area had once been part of the Scandinavian Dane law, William the Conqueror's scorched earth northern campaign had left the area ripe for exploitation by his lords. By all measures, Normanton likely owes its name to these aggressive new warriors. The town remained very small until it became the focus of several railway lines in the mid-19th century. Work began in 1837 under the supervision of George Stevenson on the construction of the North Midland Railway from Derby to Leeds. This was soon followed by an addition to the York and North Midland Railway from York and then the Manchester and Leeds Railway from Manchester, which all extended to Normanton, thereby giving the town access to much of the country. At that time, Normanton had the world's longest railway station platform, a quarter of a mile long. The station was considered the most important in England, employing over 700 people who looked after the station's 700,000 passengers a year. Now, with a population of 20,000 people, Normanton, of course, is very, very big. And most of this episode will be done by a, the car, by driving around some of the residential areas. So the main walk around is going to focus mainly on the town centre. Although there are some other places that I will walk to as well. Uh, probably take about an hour to walk around the town centre. And then we'll hop into the car and head towards Altofts. The town served as an important part of the transport infrastructure for national and local industries, including coal and bricks, although most of this was lost during the 1950s and 1960s, with the last remaining operational brickworks eventually closing in the mid-1990s. There were three brickworks in the town, which were all built within the small area of Newland, an area which we know today as Newland with Woodhouse Moor. There's some more information coming about that parish later on in this video. The brickworks took advantage of the abundance of clay in the area. A fourth works was founded in the 1890s by Thomas Kirk from Nottingham, who had heard rumours that Normanton was rapidly turning into an important junction on the railways. Both Kirk and his sons used their life savings and formed the Normanton Brick Company at Altofts, which closed in 2011. We'll see Altofts later. So, if anything, I would say Normanton is probably geared more towards the railway history, but of course, don't forget the mining history here and these pit wheels here on the main road into the town centre are a stark reminder, as always. 
House prices in the town on average come in at £177,000. Demographics wise, Normanton's massive population is spread over an area of 12.53 square kilometres. This gives the town a population density of 1,753, one of Wakefield's highest. 97.5% of the people who live here identify as white British. Once again, the amenities and interesting features have all been lumped together because they're effectively treading on each other's toes here, being as they're so close together. Let's start with the railway station. The town is still accessible via the modern station and it's currently served by an unmanned island platform with regular trains to Leeds, Castleford, Wakefield and Sheffield Meadowhall interchange. There's even a handy map you can have a look at here showing the Northeastern Railway and its destinations. On the other side of this, there's the Town Council's logo, and in the corner, there's a reference to Alice Bacon. We'll discover some more about her when we reach the Town Hall. Transport in the town is very good. Normanton is just off Junction 31 of the M62. As well as the railway station, the town is on plenty of bus routes, and it's served by taxi and minibus companies. The town centre has a nice selection of shops which include Lidl and Asda supermarkets as well as a range of independent shops too. Check out this nice little clock in the marketplace. Here's one of the two entrances to Normanton High Street. This one is from the Market Square. Both ends are marked with these, I guess you'd call them arches. Do these have a proper name? Let me know. The Golden Jubilee Obelisk was installed in 2002, right in the heart of the pedestrianised shopping area, and was funded by local businesses. What you're looking at now is the assembly rooms built in 1889. In 1910, a cinema licence was granted for shows in the main hall. By July 1912, these were being presented more formally by Messrs Dobito and Buxton, who provided a mixture of variety and films as the Picture Palace. The Asda supermarket is really interesting. Look above the sign here, you'll see it says the word baths. Normanton also has a market, which is something I didn't know until I came here. Here's the market square and the stalls that go with it, as seen from the back of B&M. Market days here are Tuesdays and Fridays. Ironic then, that my usual filming days are Tuesday and Fridays, except that I came here on a Thursday, the one time that I don't come out on a Tuesday or a Friday. I am led to believe though it still thrives, much like the one in South Elmsham. There's plenty of pubs. Here's one such example, the Black Swan, located where Queen Street meets the High Street. Normanton also has a leisure centre, a library which doubles as a community centre and a surgery too, all of which were seen on my walk around. So I caught this building out the corner of my eye earlier and I wondered if it was something, and it is. It's a block of apartments, but it used to be a bank. It says bank above that blue door there. I wonder which bank it used to be. On the side of Normanton Town Hall is a blue plaque for the pioneering Alice Bacon, Yorkshire's first female MP who was born and raised here. Hoare Hill Park now, and this is perhaps the largest of the town's open green spaces. It's certainly the closest to the town centre, being a short walk away. Now this is the kind of thing I like to find. I've just come into Hoare Hill Park and obviously there's a little sign here that's telling us uh, about the park. Uh, we are, I think, where are we? Uh, I think we're up there somewhere. And there's a circular trail you can take around it. But underneath this sign, there's this. This is the rear of the library and lake circa 1950s. 
And that lake, you can see in this old picture, I believe is that lake right there. In the park, you'll come across quite a large war memorial flanked by two tablets that bear the names of the war heroes here, one for World War I and one for World War II. There's also what is known as a centenary stone which was laid in 2018 to commemorate 100 years since the end of World War I. Check out these sculptures as well, this owl stands proudly overlooking the lake. This park has a large green space which includes a football pitch, and nestled away along one side is something called the Well Project. The Well Project is a community-centred charity and acts as a community hub for Normanton and the surrounding areas for those in need of support with shopping, medication collection or telephone befriending. The Normanton Food Bank opens twice weekly and operates a delivery model for those isolating due to COVID-19. Religious buildings now, here's the Methodist Church on the corner of Wakefield Road and Mill Hill. There's an old primitive Methodist chapel dating to 1902, close to Hall Hill Park. This has since been turned into a kitchen and bedroom showroom. Normanton has two cemeteries. There's a lower cemetery and an upper cemetery, separated by what appears to be an expanse of waste ground. Normanton's upper cemetery, as we see here on a plaque behind the parish rooms, was opened in 1876. All Saints is the Church of England Parish Church of Normanton. It's believed to have existed since at least 1256 and it's built in the perpendicular style. It's thought to have been commissioned by Roger Le Paterman of Altoffs Hall. However, a prior church is mentioned in the Doomsday Book of 1086. It's likely that the current church stands on the lines of the original. The building is built of mainly coarse dressed sandstone blocks under a stone slate roof and consists of a three bay chancel with a south chapel adjacent. There's a four bay nave with north and south aisles and a clerestory. A tower was added to the western end in the 15th century. In the 19th, clergy and choir vestries were added as well as an organ chamber. The building was granted Grade 2 listing status in 1965. It was internally reordered in 1991 and again in 2019. Okay, so my uh, my route around Normanton was always going to come through the cemetery, uh, and the reason for that is because somewhere here, marked on Google Maps, is a grave of Councillor Graham Phelps. Now I've had a quick look around these headstones, and I can't seem to see it. Um, whether or not I'm just blind, I don't know, but uh, yeah, um, it seems to be a notable grave anyway. Otherwise, it wouldn't be marked on the map. That's the ideal time to transition into schools. John Freeston School is now the parish rooms, which later moved to the site of Normanton Junior School on Church Lane. Normanton has quite a few schools. These include Normanton All Saints Primary, Normanton Junior Academy, Normanton Outwood Academy Freeston, Newlands Primary School, Altoffs Junior School, Normanton Common Primary Academy, St John the Baptist Catholic Primary School and Lee Brick Primary School. There's one school I've purposely left off that list and we'll talk more about that when we get to Altofts. Now, even though Newland with Woodhouse Moor already has its own video, it's worth mentioning in this special section how important it was to Normanton. As discussed in that episode, Newland Estate was a small township on the north bank of the River Calder, existing since 1213 when it was established by King John as a preceptory of the Knights Templar. The estate changed hands of ownership a number of times since King Henry VIII sold the land in 1544, with final ownership landing on the Warmfield Company in 1926, who ran brickworks until the mid-20th century. That answers the question which I asked in that episode. The chimney which we saw is from the old brickworks. Newland today has a population of zero, one of only eight parishes in England that do. It's kept as a nature reserve with the remains of the estate overgrown with shrubs and plant life. 
The area once occupied by St John's Colliery is now part of the controversial Welbeck landfill site, which has been the subject of both local and national media attention since its development as a toxic tip. OK, the rain's just started to fall, but that's not a problem because that's the main walk around finished and this next section involves the car. We're going to take a drive around the rest of Normanton, uh, or at least some of it anyway. It's a big place. I'll not be able to drive around, it's around all of it. Uh, so uh, camera's going on the dashboard and this will take us into Altofts. Now let's go for a little drive, or in fact a long drive. Normanton is so big that this was simply the easiest way to show you as much as possible. The majority of this drive focuses on the housing estates to the south and west, and then we head up through the industrial estates after crossing the M62 before looping back into Altofts. This gives me a chance to tell you some more things about Normanton that I haven't been able to fit in the previous sections. Hanson House is one of the earliest buildings to survive within the village. This is set back from the church and has a timber frame construction. The building was constructed in the mid 15th century, with a later wing added in the 18th. Once fire damaged, the building has been restored and modernised. The church houses the Freeston tomb, the burial place of Sir John Freeston of Altofts, who died in 1594. If his name is familiar, it may be because you remember the Freeston name in the Warmfield Come Heath episode. His will provided for an almshouse at Kirkthorpe and a grammar school for Normanton and Warmfield. The coming of the railways enabled the locally mined coal to be sent across the country. Demand soon outstripped supply and many more shafts were sunk to reach the coal seams under the town. In 1871, Dom Pedro, the Emperor of Brazil, visited Normanton with his Empress and gave his name in a slightly altered form to the Dom Pedro Colliery at Hope Town. Today, roads in the area of the former colliery retain the name. At their peak, the collieries employed over 10,000 men, most of whom wanted to move themselves and their families to Normanton. The town enjoyed a boom period, with more mines opening and more shafts being sunk in order to meet the increasing demand for coal until, by the mid-1970s, most coal seams in the Normanton area were worked out. The disputes surrounding the miners' strike of 1984 meant that many mines across the country were to close, although by this stage there were no collieries still in production in Normanton. The strike still affected many families in the area as Normanton colliers still worked in pits in the neighbouring towns. By this time the railway station was in such a state of neglect and disrepair that the decision was made to demolish it in 1986. Sadly now, very little now remains of Normanton's railway and mining heritage. That said, Normanton has become a growing commuter suburb of the Leeds city region, with relatively cheap housing and efficient transport links. The addition and expansion of the Eurolink industrial estate at Junction 31 of the M62 has attracted national and multinational corporations to locate their distribution depots here.
The town is home to a cricket club, Normanton St John's Cricket Club and two football teams, AS Normanton FC and Normanton Athletic Juniors. Arguably the biggest sport in the area is, unsurprisingly, rugby league. Normanton Knights are the town's main amateur club and play in the National Conference League. Lower Altoft is an area at the lower end of the village. It had the longest unbroken row of three-storey terraced houses in Europe, Silkston Row, until 1978 when it was demolished. Okay, just before we get going with old toffs to round this one off, it's time you guys had today's picture bit, and here it comes right now.
Now we come to Altofts, a village within Normanton's boundaries. It's five miles northeast from the centre of Wakefield and less than one mile northwest of Normanton. The M62 runs close to the village to the northeast and the air and cold navigation is to the northwest. Like Normanton, many people in the village previously worked in the local coal mines. The largest mine in the village, the West Riding Colliery, was owned by Pope and Pearsons. It was here that the first British coal dust experiments took place during 1908 and 1909, conducted by W.E. Garforth, manager of the colliery and president of the Mining Association of Great Britain. Today, people are either employed in neighbouring towns and cities or in the Wakefield Europort's Tuscany Park Industrial Estate, which has been developed over recent decades. The village has four pubs, the Poplar, Miner's Arms, the Horse and Jockey and the Robin Hood. The Horse and Jockey is seen here. This is the oldest pub in the village. The Robin Hood has had since 2015 a microbrewery at the rear called Tarn 51 Brewing Co, producing beers to serve both in the pub and to the other local pubs. There are two working men's clubs, one of which has been converted into a community centre called The Brig. The Brig is owned by the registered charity called Altofts Community and Sports Foundation Limited. The Brig is home to many community groups including Normanton Lions, Altoff Juniors Football Club, a cycling club, a readers group and the Altofts Book Swap is also based at the Brig and it hosts an annual summer gala to promote local talent and community groups. In the village there's also a post office, a butchers and a small number of shops and farms. This has got to be some kind of record, surely. I'm on a street called the High Street, but look how short this is. <laughs> Probably one of the shortest High Streets I've ever known. Altoff's Junior School celebrated its 30th anniversary in 2008. Altoff's two infant schools are Lee Brig Infant School and the one which I omitted from the longer list back in Normanton. That would be Martin Frobisher Infant School. The reason for this is because it's named after one of Altoff's most famous sons. Martin Frobisher was an Elizabethan sea captain and adventurer credited with the discovery of Frobisher Bay in Canada. He was the son of merchant Bernard Frobisher of Altoff's and Margaret York of Goothwaite. He was the third of five children when his father died prematurely in 1542. Little else is known of his early life in Yorkshire and his education appears to have been rudimentary. Religious sites in the village include Altoft's Methodist Church which opened in 1990. It was built when the three Methodist congregations from Lower Altoft's, Lock Lane and Upper Altoft's amalgamated. The Church of St Mary Magdalene is the Anglican parish church for the village and is Anglo-Catholic in tradition. The Hebron is an independent church also located on Church Road. Now you might not be able to read that sign up there. We'll just try and get a bit closer. Altoffs and Normanton Brass Band. New players welcome. Rehearsal times Wednesday and Sunday half seven until half nine. And they've even got a website. In terms of sport, Altoffs Community Sports Club and playing fields provide for cricket, football and bowls. The cricket club plays at Lock Lane and is in the Bradford Cricket League. There's a football team too, Altoffs AFC, which was founded in the 1890s. So there you have it people, that's Altoft and that's Normanton and that's Wakefield in its entirety complete. All 30 have now been visited. I remember saying way back in the Badsworth episode, the very first one I did, uh, not only in uh, Wakefield but also in West Yorkshire, that I uh, don't know West Yorkshire very well. Uh, it's an area that I'm not particularly uh, familiar with. Um, and it's been great to, to get out into it and explore these areas that I've never been to before. Um, and just broaden my, my my knowledge basically of, uh, of Yorkshire. It's been a learning experience for me, probably as much as it has been for you. Um, and yeah, I've enjoyed every minute. <laughs> Uh, I don't really want this one to end because I've enjoyed it from start to finish but of course it's not quite done because there is the small matter of the roundup video which will come two weeks after uh, two weeks from the date of this video going out 
Um, so yeah, if there's anything else you'd like to add to any of the 30 Wakefield videos, please do let me know and I will it do my best. I will do my best to put it into the Roundup video. But for now, this has been the parish and the town of Normanton and this has been the district slash city of Wakefield. And I've been Andy, otherwise known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out.